Hi, everyone. Greetings from Portland, Oregon. A uh, reminder of a couple of quick housekeeping items before we get started. Please, if you don't mind, keep yourself on mute. Uh, go ahead and add your affiliation next to your name, the Zoom ID. Uh, as always, if you need record permission, our pal Arnie is standing by. He's monitoring everything. Let him know. We'll take care of that. And as always, if you have a question, just hit the virtual raise hand button and we will call on you here in just a bit. Uh, well, certainly while there's two races remaining in the 2023 NTT IndyCar Series season calendar, uh, several teams are already looking ahead to 2024, and that includes Chip Ganassi Racing earlier today, the team announcing that Linus Lundquist is joining the team beginning in 2024, part of a multi-year contract and deal. Linus, of course, uh, 2023 Indy Next by, or check that, 2022 Indy Next by Firestone Champion. Uh, getting a premium ride next year with a premium team like Chips. And Linus joins us. Linus, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. You know, it's um, it's a pleasure hearing you say those words. And it's going to take a long time for uh, for my smile to fade. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to firstly be with the team for the, for the next uh, two races and obviously learn as much as I can and then hit, um, hit the ground running the next year. So obviously a lot of hard work has gone into this and, and to make it happen. What were the emotions like when the deal was done? Uh, you knew you were going to be joining a championship caliber team like Chips. I mean, it's unbelievable. It, still today, I have difficult to put it into words how much this means. Um, you know, I'm incredibly thankful to Chip and Mike and everybody involved to making this happen. Um, you know, firstly, it's, it's a dream to even be an IndyCar driver, but to be able to do it, with the team like Chip Ganassi Racing, it's it's unbelievable. So uh, I'm, I know that it's a big challenge ahead, uh, but I know that you know I'm gonna have a great team around me with some uh, with some great people. So I'm gonna try to learn as much as I can and uh, and hopefully provide some good results for us. And you're already on site. I know this track walk uh, hopefully dries up for that track walk later today here in Portland. Uh, how important is it to, to really get involved quickly with the team and the meetings and engineering and, and so on and so forth? Yeah, the earlier you can do that, the better. And that's why I think it was so great that I had the possibility to to be with the team for these uh, last two races. Obviously, looking from the outside, just seeing how the team operates, learning everybody's names, you know, it's <laughs> easy and simple stuff like that just makes life easier when you go into uh, go into a season and you want to extract the most out of uh, each and every team member. So you know, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, like I said, I know it's going to be tough in the beginning, but I also know that I'm going to have the best people uh, surrounding me. It's an exciting time. New era for your career, for sure. Let's go, go ahead and open it up for questions. Again, if you have a question, uh, hit the virtual raised hand button and we will call on you and bring you into the conversation. We'll begin. Uh, Bruce Martin, NBC Sports and Forbes. Go ahead, Bruce. Hi, Bruce. Hey, everybody. Um Linus, if you could give us a little bit of a timeline as to how all of this fell together. At the beginning of the season, you were uh, disappointed because you weren't able to strike a deal with Dale Coyne. So from that point forward, how did we get to today? Yeah, um, well, I'll tell you, I've been harassing uh, <laughs> this team for about two and a half years time uh, about getting me a deal. So, you know, it started a very long time ago, and I think... Obviously, during last winter, like you said, you know, being disappointed not only with Coin but any team, you know, I was finding finding like crazy to find a spot. Didn't wasn't able to do that. Um, tried to do everything that I could to kind of remain still in people's mind and at the forefront of of these team bosses' uh, heads. Um, and when the opportunity came to do Nashville, um, obviously I grabbed it and tried to do the best I could. And after that. You know, uh, some more serious talks started to to happen, and um, and obviously here we are a couple of weeks later. So it's been intense, but at the same time, like I said, this um, this started a very very long time ago. So when Nashville happened, and you're with Meyer Shank Racing, that was independent of uh, this. But were they aware? Was Meyer Shank Racing aware that you were getting close to a deal with Chip Ganassi Racing? Well, I kept talks in with a lot of teams. Like I said, you know, I've been <laughs> I've been uh, harassing these team team principals, each and every one of them, for the last couple of years, and I didn't stop doing that. Uh, the only difference was that maybe at Nashville it was the the other way around, where all of a sudden they were calling me instead of me calling them, um, and obviously that that kept uh, kept up happening throughout Nashville and after Indy and, and into Gateway as well. 
And I guess how valuable was perseverance in this deal? Because a lot of guys could have got pretty bummed out, especially after not having a ride at the beginning of the year when you were the Indy Next champion. Yeah, well, I'm not going to lie. I was bummed out too. Um, and, you know, I kind of sat sat at home asking myself like, okay, I've done everything that I possibly could, but we still haven't um, had a chance. Am I going to give up? And I said, no, that's not me. That's not who I am. So I decided I'm going to do everything that I possibly can to try to still remain in the game and, um, and give myself a shot. And um, like you said, persevering. And I think keep reminding people that you're here for a reason that helped. And then when I did get the opportunity, um, I think we, we did the most out of it. And that's why I'm sitting here today. And finally, have you been assigned a car number yet? No, not that I'm aware of, at least. Okay, thank you and good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Let's go to Ben Johnson from the Paddock Eye. Hey, Ben. Hey, Dave. Cheers. Hey, Linus. Congratulations on today's news. Thank you. Thanks very much, mate. Um, Linus, obviously, like... You're going into a full-time season next year with like with Chip Ganassi Racing. How beneficial has it been for you, having had a bit of seed time already with Meyershank? You know, you're so you're not going in blind, you know, and you've you've you're used to the Honda Power unit as well, right? So, with that in mind, is that kind of a step already done for you, where you don't have to get used to the car, you just have to get used to working with new engineers and stuff, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, having done these three races this year has helped me tremendously. And in almost an ironic way, this year seems to have prepared me the best possible way for, for next year. Um, so I'm extremely thankful for the opportunity that I had with, with Mayor Shank Racing. Um, and I was happy as well that we were able to do Nashville, a street course, India road course, and the gateway, a short oval. Um, and having tested on Texas earlier this year on a super speedway. So we've ticked a lot of boxes this year. I would have loved to take all of them and been racing a full time. Um, but if not, this turned out to be the second best way. Um, and hopefully, like I say, next year, you know, I've already done, you know, a few races and have that under my belt. I have the relationship with Honda, I know how they work. Um, so I'm looking forward to get stuck into it now with Chip Ganassi Racing and all these new people that I'm going to be working with. Excellent. And in terms of working with the drivers, you know, you're going to be working with some some pretty heavy hitters in IndyCar. You know, you've got Scott Dixon and Alex Pillow. You know, how excited are you to be working with those guys? I'm extremely, to, extremely excited to be working with not only the drivers, but, you know, you look at the mechanic and engineering side, you know, it's some of the best names in the sport and you just look at... You know, the team's history, um, you know that you're going to be able to to fight for wins and podiums at almost every race. Um, and that's everything and more as a driver you could ask for. So I'm excited. Um, like I said, learning from um, especially, you know, the all time great Scott Dixon and especially maybe these last two last two races. I'm going to try to see and work out the mystery that he is and see what, what I can pick up. Yeah, excellent. Well, congratulations again. And uh, looking forward to seeing Trackside next year. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. You got it, Ben. Linus, the first thing you got to do is figure out how Scott makes fuel mileage at ovals like he did last week at the Worldwide Technology Raceway. If you can master that early on in your career, you it's going to be pretty good. So Yeah, I, I don't know. It seems like it's taken him quite a couple of years, so I doubt that I will be able to do it in my first year, but it's definitely um, – Something good to aim for. Yeah, just so start picking his brain early. All right, uh, Jeroen Demidal from Champ Web Peter Series. Go ahead, Jeroen. Thanks, Dave. Hey, Linus. Uh, hey, it's been man. a while, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, um, now that you got this deal sorted out, um, after what after thing that happened after Laguna Seca last year, does this feel like vindication? One hundred percent. And I think that's. Also, what makes it the more sweeter in that sense, um, you know, we've been finding, you know, not only after Laguna, but for many, many years, um, you know, this is the first time ever in my career that I've that I've actually known that I'm going to be racing full time uh, next year. And obviously, as part of a multi-year deal, I know that I'm going to be racing for, you know, a few years ahead of me, uh, which is something unbelievable. You know, every year that I've gone into in the past has always been like, I don't even know if I'm going to finish the season. So uh, to be in this position, uh, to be racing an IndyCar together with this team, I mean, it's, um, yeah, my life had, uh, has made a drastic change in the last couple of weeks. 
That's very good to hear. Hey, you mentioned before that you were, you know, somewhere during the past 12 months, you were sometimes sitting on your couch, maybe waiting for a phone call for it to come, to not come. Um, were you always confident that things would work out for 2024? Or did you have some moments of despair as well? Ah, no, I never believed that it was going to work out ever. Uh, <laughs> I basically have the had the mindset of like, okay, I'm hoping for the best, but I'm preparing for the worst. So, um, you know, I always basically told myself that no one's going to call you. You're going to have to make the calls and just mm. hope that they pick up. Um, if not, then you're going to make, you know, timely run buys in outside of their trailer until they <laughs> actually walk out and, and, uh, and you remind them. So I, um, that's basically what I did, you know, since Laguna last year, I've just been hoping and waiting for an opportunity to, to come out and, um, uh, Obviously, that just happened this year, and uh, it turned out pretty well for us. <laughs> I would say so. Hey, so do you have any any goals yet for twenty twenty four? Any ambitions for where you want to end? What where you want next season to end up? Yeah, I don't have any like set goals for myself. Like I'm gonna win a race or take pole position or be on the podium. The one thing that I learned, um, especially in my second year in 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 the in the lights now in the next. Um, it's just that I, I try to maximize whatever package I have on the weekend and that being myself and, and the car. But if I'm only good to be 10th that day, then I'm going to fight like hell, try to be ninth instead of trying to be fifth. So that's kind of the mindset that I go into, um, you know, next year, just trying to maximize whatever I have as long as learning from this uh, amazing group of people that I'm going to be working with and uh, knowing that, you know, that's basically where most of the speed and, you know, I think results going to come from is just learn from, learn from these guys and try to get my own twist on it. Cool. Well, I'm really, really, really happy for you, man. Get up this. Thank you. Tech, tech. Thanks, Dave. You got it, Rune. Yeah, we're all happy for you, man. That's that's the bottom line. Uh, certainly brought a lot of smiles to a lot of people in the paddock uh, to know you're part of the series in 2024. Uh, let's go to Ida Wood. Ida, go ahead. Hi, Linus. Long time no see. Um, great to hear how proactive you've been. Two and a half years of talking teams. That is, I can't even remember what I was doing two and a half years ago. Um, with those, like, not just Ganassi, but with those other teams, when you were starting discussions, how often was it coming to, we'd like to see what money you can bring or what kind of financial, uh, you know, further down the road reward you can bring to the team? And how often was it, we'd like to see you do some IndyCar racing first before we engage further talks? Because now you have had races, and these talks came all serious and you've got a deal. It sounds like it might have been more the latter. Yeah, no, um, you know, the money side and the budget side of racing is always is always there. Um, I think in IndyCar, you got not a 50-50 split. I think probably, you know, a few more of the teams have fully sponsored cars, which obviously give them a little bit more freedom um, and doesn't require the driver to uh, to bring in sponsorship, which is good. Um and I think, you know, a lot of the teams basically said that obviously you've done well in the junior series, but a lot about it is is about timing as well. Because even though when you have the result and even um, even though from the outside, it looks like everything might work out, you know, there are other things happening and other um, other things that decide outside factors that can decide those decisions. Um, and I think now when we had the opportunity at Nashville and in Indy and kind of show for real what we have in the big series i think they kind of took a second look at us and said that hey you know this guy he's a proven race winner in the in the lower series and he seems to be able to handle himself in indycar and i think that's kind of what what made the the final decision to kind of tip them over uh, what i think at least i don't know you're gonna have to ask them themselves but that's uh, <laughs> that's the way that i tell myself at night at least that was the the big uh, big decision for them and on the physical side, through this year, have you been training to a degree where you'd be ready to step into a car at any point? And does that mean for this off season, you don't actually have to kind of up your training level because you're already at that caliber of spending that much time preparing to be sat in an Indy car? Yeah, I mean, you're always going to have to up your game, uh, especially when you're going to have Scott Dixon as a teammate. There's no stopping of how much you need to improve. Uh, but I actually got a big, uh, got to give a uh, big shout out to PitFit. They've been helping me during this, you know, year of not racing to continue to push me and said that, Hey, you got to stay ready and, you know, come train. If the opportunity arises, then you got to be fit and ready. So I have done that. It hasn't always been the easiest to try to keep motivated in doing it. Uh, but I am extremely thankful that I did do it. So when the opportunity came up, it was like, okay, you know, I lack a little bit of driving, but the physical side, you know, I should be there. 
And aside from Scott Dixon, what do you think is going to be the hardest thing you're going to be up against or hardest person you're going to be up against next year? Uh, I mean, whoever's second in the championship, because I expect myself <laughs> to be leading. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, like I said, I haven't really thought too much into uh, next year in the, in the sense of who's going to be my most difficult opponent. Like I said, I'm just going to try to do the best I can. Um, and like I said, I don't know where that would be. If it's 10th, 1st or 5th, don't really matter. I'm just going to try to steadily improve and we'll uh, we'll see where we're at at the end of the year. Thanks and good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Ida. Edmund Jenks, Motorsports Journal. Go ahead, Edmund. Hey, Linus. Welcome to the show. Um, boy, Thank you. I remember at the beginning of the season, uh, a lot of talk was being uh, had that, uh, well, geez, all these other people are getting rides. How come Linus doesn't have one? After all, he's got championships. Um, so, uh, and I'm sure you heard all of that as well. Uh, and you did make a lot of phone calls, but how did it feel to be here in the last race and register the fastest lap against all drivers and still not have a contract at the time? Yeah, um, honestly, I didn't really reflect over it that much uh, because I know that every time you get an opportunity to do, especially a race in IndyCar, you're being put on display in front of each and every team down this paddock. So my mind was basically like, okay, well, this is your one shot, trying to make the most out of it. Um, and uh, I basically went flat out. And, you know, to get the fastest lap was a nice bonus. But at the end of the day, it doesn't bring more points to the team or anything like it. So, um, you know, there was always that in, in the back of my mind. It wasn't like a target that we had, but Obviously, it's a nice piece of fact uh, that, that you can uh, go back home with. Uh, but I don't know. I, I'd, I'd like to think it wasn't just the fast lap that made the decision from from the big bosses to to have me here. I'd like to think it's more of a, the overall sense uh, and the performance of the weekend. Strikes uh, probably many of us out here that, uh, you know, it's pretty good uh, getting to know the people at Honda and then be able to get a contract with another Honda team. Um, especially given the fact you're relatively new to IndyCar and then to be able to do a fastest lap and show, you know, some acumen on, on the, uh, on the courses here. Um, how quickly do you think you'll be able to, uh, be right up there with your, uh, other two teammates? Yeah, firstly, thank you. Um, and again, I I really don't know. You know, I like to believe in my own ability and, you know, I know I can be fast, but I also know that it is going to be tough because you're going to be going up against, you know, some of the best who's ever done it. Um, so I don't expect myself to be there right away. You know, my first, this is still going to be my first rookie year. There's a lot of things that I'm going to have to learn. And, um, you know, I'm embracing that process because I know that I'm going to have the you know, the best drivers and the best engineers to work with and learn from. Um, and hopefully, you know, by the end of the year, we can, we see that I have an improvement and uh, hopefully we can be there to mix it in uh, every once in a while with them. Well, it's been great to watch, uh, I guess, a start with uh, such a lack of friction. Uh, in other words, good running and um, good luck in 2024. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Edmund. Let's go, uh, Lucrezia Costa from FitGoodBrief.com. Lucrezia, go ahead. Uh, thanks, Dave. Uh, hi, Linus, and uh, congratulations on uh, the news and on the signing. Yeah, thank uh, you. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to ask you, uh, you've worked your way up to IndyCar through the United States uh, system, but uh, many of your fellow European drivers have are have been joining IndyCar from instead Formula One and Formula Two. Do you think like do you feel like Formula IndyCar is uh, becoming more popular and gaining more traction and respect from European drivers like others? Uh, and like, what what do you think is the reason for the, this switch up that has been happening in later years? So. Yeah, no, and I definitely think that IndyCar is getting more and more respect. Um, and I think every driver that you know is has been in the sport for some time and been racing in different series, they know that the level that, you know, the IndyCar drivers are at. Um, and it is good to see that more and more European drivers look over, you know, like myself. And as you mentioned, drivers from F1 and F2 joining the series. Um, and, you know, without, 
you know, the American ladder system with the scholarships, I would not be sitting here today. And that was one of the leading causes that made me uh, venture over to the US. Um, and like I said, without that, I would not be racing at all today. So I'm extremely thankful that the system works here in the US. Um, and it is, you know, hopefully more drivers from Europe can see and realize that and try to go over and um, and have a go at it because it's, it's definitely the way to go. And, um, and uh, in today's world, if you don't have, you know, a ton of budget or sponsorship to, to walk through the ranks in, in Europe. Okay, thanks. So I have another one. Uh, before moving to the States, you raced against like Tsunoda, Lawson, Sargent and Piastri. Is there a part of you that like seeing them all up there in Formula One having success? Like, is there a part of you that wonders uh, what could have been to made uh, to make like uh, working your way up to Formula One? Do you think that might be in store for the future? Who knows? And uh, honestly, no, I don't think about that, that road for a minute, because mm -hmm. I, uh, I did my very best to try to go that way in Europe. Um, but I, I didn't have any way to go further with it. Um, even after winning, winning a championship over there. So, uh, I am still incredibly happy and proud of the decision to go over here to the U S and like I mentioned, you know, without, without that decision and, and, uh, and the scholarship system over here, I would not be racing. Um, and here I am, you know, sitting, in IndyCar, uh, to be an IndyCar driver, and I could not ask for anything more. So, uh, no, I uh, I don't have any thoughts or think about what could have been. You know, I'm right where I want to be. Okay, thank you so much. Final one, very short. So you took part in the Formula E rookie test in Berlin. Would you have enjoyed, like, a full-time seat in the championship, or was IndyCar always your final goal for 2024? Yeah, the, the, the goal was always in the car. Uh, but obviously, as as a driver that didn't have any um, any anything done for 24, I looked at every option. And when the possibility came up to do the, the rookie test, um, I said, hell yeah, let's do it. Let's try it out. Um, but my goals and my eyes were always set on in the car because this is this is where I want to be. Um, and it seemed like I made the right decision on that part. Thank you very much. And congratulations again. Thank you, thank Dave. You. Yeah, thank you. Guys, thanks for joining us, Lucrezia. Uh, if there is a follow-up, let us know. We have time for one or two more. In the meantime, Alejandro Berzosa, pit lane motor. Go ahead, Alejandro. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Linus, first of all, congratulations for this incredible deal for, for your career. I want to ask you about not your teammate for the 2024 season, but uh, about the driver that you will replace, that it's Marcus Eriksson. Have you had the opportunity to talk with Marcus about uh, the car, their pace uh, before the the announcement? And if you have the opportunity, uh, what can you extract that you have applied for the 2024 season? Yeah, um, I haven't been able to speak to Marcus about, you know, the car itself, how it handles and and, and kind of the, the secrets to going fast in it. Uh, but we have spoken generally. We were actually on the same flight this morning. Um, so we, we've been talking. Um, and in terms of strategy for, for next year, um, I think, like I said, you know, I'm a... I believe in myself that I'm a fast racing driver and I'm going to do my best to to perform. But I also know that I am going in as a rookie, like I said, you know, against the the very best in the sport. And I have the privilege to be teammates with them. So uh, obviously a lot of uh, learning and, um, you know, asking is going to be done in the, in the especially the first part of the season. Um, but I know that, you know, if, once I'm comfortable with the car and, you know, um, I'm getting, um, uh, getting to feel right at home. I know that the results and the speed is going to be there. So I'm not overly worried about that. I'm just going to try to learn as much as I can in the beginning. And how special was for you to drive the same car as a, an, a former F1 driver, former Indy, Indy 500 winner, and at the same time, how much pressure uh, does this, this deal, this uh, responsibility for, for you? Uh, firstly, uh, at least what I'm aware of, I I have not been told that it's the eight car that I'm going to be racing. Uh, so I don't know if you know something that I don't, uh, but I can tell you that no matter what car you will be racing, uh, when you race for Chip Ganassi Racing, there's going to be pressure. Um, there's no doubt about it. 
but that's as a driver that's exactly what you want you know you want that pressure and at least in in my experience the biggest pressure i've always has always been from my side um and uh, you know i um i want to be in a situation that you put under pressure because it means that you usually have the possibility to win um and that is what i love to do and that's why i'm here um so um yeah that's that's kind of the way that i look at it at least uh, okay thank you very much and i hope a very successful deal with uh, with tikanasi and you thank you thank you very much okay time for uh, one or two more ben i know you got to follow up so hang tight let's go james elson from uh james where are you from uh, motorsport magazine go ahead james hi Linus. uh congrats on the ride thank um, you this is all very, happened very quickly over the last few weeks um when you did your superstar sub appearance in nashville <laughs> did you expect that you know some a ride would come together so quickly and do you feel like your life's been kind of turned upside down in the last couple of weeks basically Yeah, 100%. My my life has done a 180 um in like you said in only a couple of weeks and you know, I I know how this business works uh in the sense of I knew the pressure and the opportunity that I had going into Nashville that if we were to perform, I was going to do myself and my career a huge favor. But it's the same other way around. If I would have gone in and didn't perform, then that's probably the end of my career. So I knew the pressure that I had going into it. And I did everything that I could to prepare myself for it and do the best best job that we could. Um, and I think that is one of the bigger reasons that we sit here today. But I also don't believe that's the that's the full reason. I want to believe that, you know, the the effort and work and results that we put in years prior to this and, you know, maybe me, <laughs> harassing Mike and Chip over these uh, last couple of years have actually paid off. So yeah, I want to believe that a combination of, of, of all that made, made this happen. Have you spoken to Chip much about 2024, about what he kind of expects from you next year? And uh, no, no, we haven't. Uh, we haven't sat down and set exact targets. And like I said, I usually don't do that for myself because, um, you know, there's so many variables in this sport. So It's very difficult to say that this was a good good weekend or bad weekend, just depending on the end result. It's very much how you approach and what you do with things. So, but I'm sure that we'll sit down and talk about you know uh, our little targets across the first five races or ten races or whatever it might be. Sure. Uh, thanks so much, Bob, and uh, good luck next year. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Thanks, James, for joining us. Uh, ben, go ahead with your follow up. Cheers, Dave. Linus, um, obviously. You know, you've got a lot of tracks coming up next year. There's the big one, the Indianapolis 500. Um, how excited are you to go to the Indy 500? You know, you're going as a driver, you know. Have you ever been to the race yourself, like as a spectator? Or I have been, uh, and I cannot begin to describe how excited I am to, to be racing in that one. Um, I've been there for the last three years, and the first two years I was more than excited to be like on the grandstand, just watching and taking it in. Last uh, or this year was the first time I went there and I felt like the only thing that I wanted to do was race in it myself. I was just like, okay, I'm done being on the sideline. I want to do this race so badly. So uh, yeah, that will be one of, if not the highlight of the year uh, going into uh, going into next year. Excellent. Well, looking forward to seeing you on track then. Good luck, yeah. man. Me too. Me too. Thanks, man. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, Dave. You got it, Ben. Uh, Lena, I'm already looking ahead to the uh, Rookie of the Year battle next year. We have a Blumquist and a Lundquist. <laughs> This is like the all-name Rookie of the Year contest. So Yeah, I mean, a Quist will, uh, I wouldn't say win it, but I think those are the only two convert rookies it? that we have right now. So uh, as of right now, you would bet on a Quist. So, yeah, the odds are high. There's no question yeah. about that. <laughs> Uh, before we go in Swedish, if you don't mind, uh, just kind of give us uh, your thoughts about uh, this day and, and driving for Chip Ganassi Racing beginning, beginning next year. Absolut. Det här är ju eh, förmodligen den största dagen i mitt liv hittills ska jag säga. Att, eh, att få ett sånt här erbjudande och få en sån här möjlighet, det är... 
att man får det en gång i, i sin karriär det, Då ska man vara lyckligt lottad Så att jag får det under min rookie-säsong som indikarförare Är något helt otroligt Och jag vet att det kommer vara svårt Jag går upp emot några av de duktigaste förarna i hela världen eh, Men samtidigt så är det precis där jag vill vara Och förhoppningsvis så kan jag lära mig mycket av dem Och eh, som sagt, vi ska nog kunna vara med och slåss om både pallplatser och vinster i, i slutet av året Excellent. Uh, thanks so much for doing this. Again, congratulations uh, on your new role, new team. And uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Appreciate it. Wonderful. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks very much, guys. Hey, quick reminder, uh, the next NTT IndyCar Series race happens to be the BitNile.com Grand Prix of Portland Sunday. Really? Coverage begins at 3 Eastern on NBC, Peacock, and the IndyCar Radio Network. Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.